Welcome to the wonderful world of Ginette and Violette. These two lovely ladies have been friends for a long time. Ginette is a tireless horticulturalist that says she should retire soon. She's been saying that for the past 20 years. Violette, on the other hand, is retired, and her hobbies are knitting while eating blueberries, knitting while baking blueberry pies, and she loves knitting and blueberries. Today, the two friends are meeting at Stephanie Ellen's place, who produces blueberries and sea buckthorn. Their plan is to take blueberry cuttings. The blueberry trees are young and small, so Jeanette and Violette have to be careful. There are 650 shrubs, split into 10 different cultivars. The two women figured out that they need three different cultivars in their field for cross-pollination. They will choose together the three cultivars, taking into account the hardiness of the plant and the taste of the fruits. On est rendu! Prête à prendre les bleuets? Coche! Et où la sacoche? Et Ginette, elle est dans ton... Sur ton épaule, là! Ah! Ben oui, tu es dans toi! Donc j'ai les sécateurs! Ginette knows a lot about cuttings. She loves to share her knowledge with her friend Violet. She reminds her to clean her pruning shears every 10 plants in order to limit the spread of diseases. She tells her to make cuttings of 20 centimeters, cutting directly below her node. They choose to do semi-hardwood cuttings, so they cut shoots that grew last summer and started lignifying this winter. Jeanette's grandson is staying over for the weekend because he loves blueberries too. Jeanette also teaches Jacob how to do the cuttings and while he's cutting, she tells him all about the cultivar they are cutting. This one is Duke, which is an early ripening northern variety. The shrub is self-pollinating. It blooms in April and May, then produces big berries in July. The fruits have a soft, sweet taste and will grow larger if the shrub is pruned. After finishing the cuttings for all three cultivars, the two friends head back to the cabin. There. Violet's grandson, Jobin, comes by for a visit. Nous voici, nous voilà. Salut, grand-maman, mon bébé, comment ça va? Allô, Jobin. Ah, mais mon Dieu, c'est vrai que ça pousse comme des mauvaises herbes, hein? T'as vu comme il est grand? Salut, Jobin, alors, comment ça va, toi? Violet and Ginette show him the cuttings and tell him about blueberry plants. The second chosen cultivar is called Polaris. It is the most cold-hardy of all three. It grows as a smaller shrub, and Jeanette explains it can be used at the edge of the plantation to protect the other plants from the wind and the cold. It is early ripening, but makes smaller fruit which are aromatic and a bit more sour. Then, Violet explains that the third cultivar is called Hardy Bloom. It is also quite cold hardy. This cultivar is semi-self-fertile. It does better if grown with other cultivars that will cross-pollinate it. It makes sweet, medium-sized berries. Ginette and Violette head back to Violet's place. In the fall, Violet had bought a large fridge to store her pies. However, it's February and all the pies have already been eaten either by Jobin or Jacob. The two women have decided that the fridge will be the control environment where the cuttings will be kept. As they set up a heating cable in the fridge, an argument arises. Violette really wants to help the cuttings with 0.8% rooting hormones. She says, Mais Ginette, mettre des hormones de croissance dans tout et n'importe quoi. Je suis sûre que c'est bon pour les bleuets. But Ginette really doesn't agree. Non, pour les bleuets, il y a plein d'études qui ont démontré que ça fait aucune différence. Finally, they compromise. It will be an experiment. Actually, to be precise, it will be two experiments. In the first experiment, they divide their cuttings so that they have 10 cuttings for each cultivar. 
These are then separated so that five cuttings are treated with IBA and five are not for each cultivar. This makes a total of 30 cuttings in experiment one. To randomize the experiment like real scientists, Violet and Jeanette repeat the experiment identically a second time. Violet, who studied statistics in her youth, explained that there are six treatments, which are a combination of cultivars one, two, or three, with or without IVA. Violet picks out blue containers, her favorite color, and Jeanette picks out a good growing media, a third of sand, a third of G10, and a third of peat to allow for a low pH, good drainage, but also high humidity. Violet handles the fridge temperature, adjusting it to 15 degrees Celsius on Jeanette's advice. They set up the containers in the refrigerator on the heating cable, aiming for a soil temperature of 22-25 degrees Celsius. Then they wait for the roots to grow. And, and they, they wait, wait and wait, wait and wait. And eventually, the cuttings wake up. Mais Ginette, on avait laissé la lumière allumée. Quoi? Quoi, Violette? Qu'est-ce que tu dis? In the panic, Violet turns off the light to blanch the plants and delay should grow. Then they wait some more. Violet dreams of eating blueberries. And Jeanette imagines her future field of blueberry plants. And by March, they just can't wait anymore. So who was right? Did IBA make a difference? Et quand est-ce qu'on les mange, ces bleuets? Says Violet. They collect their data and transplant the cuttings. Then, with Violet's statistical knowledge and Jeanette's new computer, they analyze the data. First, they assume that there is no difference between experiment 1 and experiment 2. They group the same treatments together for the analysis so that n equals 10. Then they calculate all the averages. The average callus thickness for each cultivar with and without IBA and the average number of bud growth per cultivar with and without IBA2. Then, they set up an ANOVA. Violet's statistics were a bit rusty at first. But Jeanette's new computer has internet. With this statistical test, they determined that there was no significant difference in number of cuttings developing calluses, whether IBA was used or not. So Jeanette was right. But then, Violet suggests that cuttings whose bud grew may also be better at developing calluses. They check for a correlation and find a very small positive correlation between the calluses and the bud's development. Finally, they notice that, on average, cultivar 1 didn't perform as well as cultivars 2 and 3 for both callus growth and leaf development. However, cultivar 1 formed roots along with cultivar 2. Overall, 60% of the cuttings showed callus growth, and only 3 cuttings had small visible roots growing. Mais enfin, quand est-ce qu'on les mange ces bleuets? Says Violet. Oh, pas avant 3 ou 4 ans! Hein?